It is 6 a.m. and it's an orange and blue Monday on Denver 7 News. The roar of the crowd may be missing tonight, but the excitement remains the same. I'm excited to finally compete against someone other than you know, guys in orange and blue. Denver 7 is your home for everything Broncos ahead of kickoff tonight at Mile High. Plus, new video shows destruction left by the Cameron Peak Fire in Larimer County when firefighters will get control of the blaze. And a switch to in-person learning for some Denver students. Elementary school students may be returning sooner than DPS had originally planned. We'll have details coming up. Not your average Monday. Today we have our orange and blue on this morning. We are just hours away from the Broncos taking the field for their first game of the season. Good Monday morning to you. Thanks for joining us. I'm Brian Sanders. And I'm Molly Hendrickson. Meteorologist Lisa Hidalgo joins us from her home weather center. And Lisa, clear skies for kickoff tonight. It is going to be a beautiful night. I know I wish we could be out there tailgating or in the stands because it's going to be such a pretty night. We're looking at temperatures topping out in the upper 80s today. By about 7 o'clock, though, we'll be at around 80. By kickoff, low to mid 70s, and then we'll drop a few degrees there by the end of the game. Great night, though. So if you are at home or if you're heading out to a watch party, you've got some gorgeous patio weather. Clear skies statewide today. You can see on satellite and radar just how quiet it is this morning. And our temperatures by about 4 to 5 o'clock are going to be at around 88 in Denver, 87 in Fort Collins with mainly some mid to upper 70s for the mountains. So things are warming up as we head into this week. It's going to be our last week and a half of, well, officially summer. And man, it's going to feel like it. I'll show you just how much hotter it's going to get coming up here, Jason, in a few minutes. And we do have one problem. It's out to DIA. We also know the problem in Commerce City, but otherwise the roads look pretty good around Metro Denver. I want to start with down on C-470 as you're taking a look at the camera at C-470 in Santa Fe. Had early problems on Santa Fe, but they've all been cleared up and looking good down past uh, Aspen Grove. Take a look now at uh, the overall map, and you see a lot of green out there. We are going to start building up here in a little bit, but we still have some work that's going on there in Commerce City coming off of 270 and that flyover ramp from Vasquez to Colorado Boulevard will remain closed down, unfortunately. So your alternate's actually going to be using I-70 back over to Colorado Boulevard. And the other problem spot is going to be a DIA, where the west side of the airport is closed down for a crash that's still being investigated and cleared up. So the east side is where all the traffic is being diverted to. So it's a little bit heavier than normal to or from the airport this morning. All right. Thank you, Jason. After watching all the other NFL teams play this weekend, football is back in the Mile High City tonight. The Broncos return to in power field at mile high for the start of what will certainly be the most unique NFL season in history. The Broncos welcome the Tennessee Titans to town. We know you and the rest of Broncos country are amped up for kickoff, but the team is too. I was just the first snap getting it going. Uh, I'm excited. Um, you know, it's going to be different. It, it regardless, if it was Monday night or, or Sunday or the Thursday night game this week. I think the thing you're most anxious about is to see how they come out and play you. Got to make you feel good to have the quarterback talking that way. Kickoff against the Titans is tonight at 820. Broncos country is home to some of the greatest football fans in the world, but tonight you won't see those fans in the stands. Denver 7's Eric Lufer is live from Empower Field at Mile High. And Eric, this time in the morning, tailgaters would already be lined up waiting for the parking lots to open up there. Molly, it is so true. I have to admit it's a little weird that we're not seeing those super fans lined up and then as you get closer to the game usually this parking lot here uh, just below us is full of tailgaters one of those super fans rescue rob he's not going to be able to party it up in this lot but uh, he is now a 2020 hall of fans inductee and this is his story i was born in the broncos country i loved growing up watching john elway and all the greats this is your official Ford Hall of Fans jacket. And now Rob Garner has a place in the Hall of Fans. His nickname, Rescue Rob. He's been a firefighter for Poudre Fire Authority in Fort Collins for 15 years. A bunch of years ago, my wife made uh, my first Broncos fire helmet. And to, to this day, it's the best gift anybody's ever given me. What Rob did next helped catapult him to top Broncos fandom. We were on vacation in South Dakota and there was a fire truck on the side of the road and we decided to test drive it and drive it home. So we bought it and turned it into Broncos Country Engine 7 and from there it just exploded. The way Rob found out he was a Hall of Famer was pretty epic too. All of a sudden there was a knock on my door and I go and open it and Champ Bailey 
Champ Bailey was there and uh, told me that he was nominating me for the Ford Hall of Fans. The Ford Hall of Fans. <laughs> Way to go, Rob. You deserve it. And hey, go Broncos. And you know, Rescue Rob and his other super fans, they don't just have fun out here when they have these tailgates. Last year, they raised up to $10,000 for local charities. One of the super fans helping Rescue Rob, the Bronco Babe, she's on her way. She's gonna talk to me live here coming up at 6.30. You don't wanna miss that. I'm Eric Lou from Denver 7. All right, and I think best dress fan goes to you, Lou, with that jacket. Statement Thank you, Molly. Piece. Thank you. I, I, can't, I can't button it anymore. It doesn't fit. <laughs> That's all right. All right, we'll see you in a bit. Thanks, Lou. When you watch tonight's Broncos game, you will see fans in the stands, but they'll all be fake. The Broncos are letting fans buy a cutout with their face on it to be put in the stands. They are $100, and you can still get one for the next home game on the 27th. Broncos lineman Dalton Risner has his own memories of sitting in the stands. Hey, you know, Bill Dalton Reiser is sitting up there and, uh, you know, 572 with two chicken strip baskets and a large Coke, uh, you know, 10 years ago, 15 years ago. Money raised from the cutouts will go to the Denver Broncos charities. And again, kickoff is tonight at 820 at Empower Field at Mile High. Denver 7 will have live coverage from the stadium all day on air and on Denver 7 News for your streaming device. And then we'll have a full recap of the game tomorrow morning on Denver 7 News at 6, where you will see if we stayed up because we're going to look tired if we stay up for this one. Uh, we, we may have to, right? Game one. <laughs> High school football, meanwhile, might be played this fall after all. The decision is now in the hands of Governor Polis. This weekend, Chassa sent a new variance request to the governor for his approval. It was just last week Chassa announced high school football would still be played in the spring as originally planned. The governor says there is a small window for football and other sports to have a season this fall. Denver Public Schools will start the process of returning students to school for in-person learning over the next several weeks. Denver 7's Nicole Brady joins us from the newsroom this morning. And Nicole, elementary students will be allowed to come back soon, but parents need to take action this week. There is a very important deadline, Molly. I'll get to that in a moment. You know, I spoke with Superintendent Susanna Cordova on the very first day of remote learning last month. And at the time, she told me DPS was trying to bring back kids sooner than October. So it looks like they're going to make that deadline, but not all the kids will be coming back. DPS has released a plan to phase things in gradually, starting with kindergarten, primary, special education, and some first graders returning the week of September 28th. Then October 5th, first grade students start to phase in. That's followed by grades two through five. And then by October 21st, all elementary students in DPS are expected to be fully back to in-person learning. For middle and high school students, the district says they want to start orientations October 12th and then October 21st, they'll start a mix of in-person and remote learning. But the district says it is closely watching COVID rates and we'll use that to make decisions. DPS seems to be following the model of other school districts like Jeffco and Cherry Creek by offering full in-person learning for elementary, but maintaining a hybrid model for the middle and high schoolers. DPS uh, says it will also be bringing back before and after school care. They'll be phasing that in. And so here is that important date that you need to pay attention to right now. It's this Friday, September 18th. That is the deadline to decide if you wanna send your child in person or stick with the remote learning. If you don't make a choice, then your family will automatically stay remote for the rest of this semester, but you might be able to change things up by winter break. In the newsroom, Nicole Brady, number seven. Big decision. All right. Thank you, Nicole. Video from Air Tracker 7 shows the extent of damage from the Cameron Peak fire burning in Larimer County. The county's damage assessment team says 54 structures have been destroyed. 25 of those are homes. The fire is burning more than 102,000 acres. It's still just 4% contained. Firefighters say they don't think they'll get the fire fully contained until after Halloween. President Trump will visit California today where 29 major wildfires are currently burning. At least 27 people have died in the fires in California and in Oregon and Washington state over the past week. Dozens are still missing.